There is no guarantee for success, but there are ways to get closer to it when you do the right things. Who you surround yourself with is just as important as what you do. Finding the right people, the right classes, the right activities, and taking the right tests are all decisions that shape your future. Find out more today on Destination University with Dr. Cynthia Colon. Dr. Colon and her guests will give you the tips you need, whether you're a student, parent, or educator. Now, here is your host, Dr. Cynthia Colon. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to 30 Teens, 30 Dreams, your podcast, Destination University. We're doing a special series for the entire month of April, April 1st through the 30th. We're highlighting 30 teens and their college admission journey and exactly where they're headed. You're going to find out everything just straight from the student. And if you are a college bound teen or a champion of one, you are exactly where you're supposed to be. So welcome to today's episode. Today, we're going to meet Jadir, who's from Texas, and he is just as adorable as those puppies he's got in his hand. So you're going to hear all about him. He's going to tell you what he did for his college journey and how he came to his decision to apply early decision as a senior. But before we get to that, let's just give you the hot tip of the day. If you are college bound, if you're a sophomore or a junior, I'm asking you, are you ready for college? Are you sure you're ready for college? The reason I'm asking is because if you're not, then it's time to head on to bigfuture.org. Bigfuture.org will help you explore majors and careers. I just love this, working with my private clients. We did this together. We popped in her interests and her skills, and it popped out a number of careers that she, could, she should be interested in or should think about, and also led her down the path of majors to consider. It was really super fun. It was super easy. And to be honest with you, most teenagers can only really list about 10 to 12 careers or even majors for that matter. So if you're looking to expand your knowledge on majors and careers, head over to bigfuture.org. Okay, so the star, the special guest of the hour is Jadir. So just sound check, can you hear me okay? And are you ready to go? I'm all ready to go, yeah. All right, fabulous. Okay. All right. Well, okay. So we are going to just give away the, you know, all the marbles right now because you can see Jadir is wearing his Rice University shirt, sweatshirt. So that's where he's headed. But what's interesting is about how he came to that decision. So I'm going to start by asking uh, how you, how and when you started just exploring colleges. Was it freshman year, or sophomore year? So just give us a sort of a sense of your journey to even exploring colleges. Yeah, of course. So I think like a lot of students, I've always kind of, I've known that I was going to be going to college and um, I've always kind of like had my eye out to be my toe in since, since like, like middle school, just like, oh yeah, I think I like that school. I kind of think I like that school. But um, when I started to really become like serious, like really figure out um, what I wanted to do, um, where I wanted to go, kind of started um, in the summer of my sophomore year, and a lot of it was into my junior year where I really hunkered down and um, went, began the process. And what did you learn about yourself? Like, what types of schools were you looking, you know, big schools, sm small school, medium size, when you, you know, when you started to sort of narrow down and say, this is what I want, what were those elements that you were looking for? Yeah, so um, I currently, of course, live in Texas, but originally I spent most of my life um, in the East Coast, and that kind of consisted of New York, Connecticut, and Philadelphia. And I always um, just grew so like a kin and so comfortable in those places. Um, and I knew going um, into to the whole college experience that um, I, I wanted something similar that kind of invoked that like that diversity that you find a lot of in there and also the culture as well. Um, and just in general, just like a very, and, I, and I've always like kind of been around colleges as well. Cause like when you're in these coasts, especially like in the cities where I was at, um, I was always kind of close to like younger people um, in the kind of that college environment. And so I knew just, just then that I, I wanted not a really, really massive big school, but something where I can really get to know a lot of the people, um, something that was kind of like close knit, um, but that also had like a really nice, like um, college campus that I can really 
get into more like, I don't know if you call it traditional, but like the, the ones like the big acres, it's like really pretty. I like the older buildings. It's like all of that. So I knew kind of going in, that was kind of what I wanted. And then of course the college, like wanted something to have the major that I intended to, to, to study in. So it sounds like it was very visual. You had a sort of a certain sense of like what aesthetic you were looking for in the college, so. Yeah, within the college and the people in it as well, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so here's really, you know, for those of you who are sophomores or juniors who are listening uh, or watching, um, you know, they, what they want to know is what did you do right and what would you do differently? So what, you know, what have you learned and would pass on to advice? So let's start with first, what, what did you do right? What did you do really well? Yeah, so I think coincidentally kind of lines in uh, like exactly with the tip of the day. Um, I think uh, of the, the big future, because I think that was really what propelled my confidence in the whole college experience because going into it, I honestly had no idea what I wanted to do. I had like a bunch of things that I was good at, a bunch of things that I liked, but it was nothing narrowed down. But I do remember the day when we were all, when it was like introduced to us, I don't know if it was like the third or the fourth day, but we got to go onto the website and kind of go through, like, like you explained in the beginning. And that, that was like the first time that I saw I'm like, oh my goodness. And it ended up being sociology, but I'm like, this is like exactly what I wanted. This is what I've always tried to explain to people what I like, but never had the words to. And once I read it out for the first time, like my jaw dropped, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is it. I remember running to my mom. Um, but just, just having that foundation to know what I wanted to do really just allowed me to um, expand upon that and put myself in positions that would help myself um, like as far as like extracurricular activities go and um, just like centering my whole life around sociology so I could be ready for it and showed my commitment towards it. Um, um, so Shadir is talking about, um, so in Dream College Academy, the course that you were in, it's module four that we talk about majors and college lists and we introduce bigfuture.org there and you get to see this is the major and this is what it would look like but that, that's what those are the courses you take and so I think that's what you're talking about you when you finally read the major that was speaking to you you're like this is it oh my gosh right is that what is that right okay yeah of course <laughs> Definitely. Well, yeah. um okay so uh what would you do differently what do you wish you had done or what's a, advice that you would pass on to others yeah, so I think, um, like, obviously, you just want to, okay, I think what I would have done differently is just really focusing, like, on myself and making sure that I was, like, in the most comfortable, like, position, or not comfortable, but just, like, make sure, making sure that I was happy and I was centering my life around something that, like, really allowed me to prosper, and I know this kind of, like, divulges partially from, like, the, the, actual college experience as more just a, like daily life but like um like going into like high school I kind of just I like I didn't have like the best environment um and I wasn't I was kind of like more focusing on like how can I what can I do to make like other people happy and stuff like that um but it wasn't until I realized the kind of like the position I was in was not the best for myself and that I got did I put myself in a place that was better for me that I really began to prosper in all aspects and um, a lot of that really helped me later on in the college process because I was just more comfortable and I was able to do things that I enjoyed. And so when I'm writing about it in my college applications, I can say this is something that I really loved to do. And just if I could have go back, I would wanted to have that from the start. So that way I can have more of those like fun experiences where I'm doing something because I like it, not because I don't know. I, I, I think I'm supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. What Shadir's talking about is really, that's a golden nugget, is really, um, this process is about being authentic to who you are and being able to, to share that and um, sort of figure that out along the way. Um, because at the, at the end of the day, college is going to be, you know, what you make of it. So I hear you and it sounds like you're saying, figure out who you are and stick with that and don't do things because either you think that college wants to hear it or friends or peers or whatever, right? Did I get that right? Yeah, yeah, and it just, it, it helped me like overall, like completely just to be like more authentic to myself. Um, and I think that I've showed in my application. Wow, absolutely, it did show in your application. 
Okay, so speaking of your application, what do you think made you stand out? We call this your coolness factor. And on um, your uh, card here and your graphic, it, we talk about um, one of the things I know is that you're dual citizen, but there are some other really cool things about you. So, so share with the audience what you think helped you to stand out. Yeah, so um, I think the thing that made my essay stand out the most is that it had like an essence of like cohesion within all of it. And that um, my application from the very beginning to the end, I would think had like a story that was being told and each thing instead of contradicting each other, like work together and trying to like explain like who I was um, that like something that like grades or like test scores wasn't able to do. Um, and so like kind of like how like you mentioned, like how I am a dual citizen and I've lived like a bunch of places around the country and stuff. Um, I was just able to connect my experiences of just like being in different environments and different cultures and my love for that, for my aspirations to be in sociology and to be um, more active on campus and to want to meet new people. And, and even going back to earlier, just like saying, like showing examples of how I was in positions when I wasn't really in that. I was kind of um, deprived of that, like ability to like reach out to different cultures and how that affected me. So it's just everything worked together. And um, I think it just really showed that, it showed like what I wanted, who I was and um, what I was, what I, how I could contribute to the campus or right? just as like as an individual unique, but also be like cohesive or be like part of the larger student body. I remember going over your application just one last time before you hit submit. And uh, one of the things I talk about is, is to students is that you've got to connect the dots, make it easy for your reader to just connect all the dots from story to story, from each part of the, uh, the application just kind of unfolds and unfolds and, but still connects everything. And that, I think that's what Jadir is talking about. He, he really did a good job of connecting everything through a through line throughout the entire application, including your resume section, the essays, every part. Yeah. yeah. And then just say a word. Um, you also had a part-time job, right? How long have you been? Um, I think you're still doing part-time job. So when did you start your part-time job? What do you do? Yeah. So I started my part-time job um, last year at the beginning of September. And um, I work up until recently, like I'm taking a little bit of a break because um, I'm part of like the, the IB or the International Baccalaureate Program, which is like the European versions of like the AP um, classes. And it's like very rigorous. And so at this point, we're doing like a lot of papers. And so I just wanted to take like a little break. I'm going to go back soon, I hope. Um, but at this job that I had, it was really cool because it was right across the street from my house. And so it was super convenient. Um, I walk over and then um, every day I worked as like the host. So my entire job was just like customer service. Um, learning how to problem solve and um, also just know how to be like quick on your feet and all of that. And so I, I had like a lot of fun doing it and just throughout the entire experience. I got to, um, I learned like responsibility, um, also like leadership and like all these things that were, um, that kind of stretched just beyond just like working for money. But like, I really got to learn a lot from that experience. Yeah, I used to love reading about applicants who had jobs and, and all the things that they learned. But also talk about a sociolo sociological experiment, right? <laughs> you learn a lot about people. Oh, so. definitely, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I always, I, what I enjoyed the most about the host position is that like, when you kind of like get in the restaurant industry, you really get to see just like how crucial every single role in a restaurant is, including the customers that come, the guests that come. Um, and for the whole thing to run. And it's just like cool because you can break it down and see the part that they play. I love it, I love it. Okay, so final final thing is really to just share, obviously we already know you're, you, you're headed to Rice, you applied to early decision, which is a binding um, application, but share with everyone why Rice? Why is Rice for you? So just go ahead. Yeah, okay. So. Um, of course, like I said, it, it was like the right campus it had, like, it was like, it's a beautiful campus. Um, I had visited multiple times um, and I just got to meet the people. The people were all really cool and just like fun and very like talkative and just like very inclusive, which is everything that I wanted. 
um, as well as having like a really good sociology program. So all these things just like served to like really pull my interest. But the thing that um, got me to like the school the most was um, I think the first time I went on campus um, or maybe like the first time, like after like really getting into colleges, like starting the college process and I walked onto campus, I felt as if I was like in a, in like in a little tiny, like enclosed bubble because coming from the city life, like in Philadelphia to Houston, which is still a city, but it's a lot different. I felt very like separated and I felt like not really like included ever. Like I never felt like at home, but once I entered the campus, I really felt that like inclusion and that like, this is like a part um of this of the city that I felt um I could be a hundred percent myself and so that was like when I knew that that was the school for me and like I just I just fell in love with it uh so one of the things I love um uh, is the fact about rice that has more trees on their campus than students is that is that right, is that right? I, you know, anyway anyway I haven't been I'm gonna come come visit I want to come visit you I hear it's just beautiful but mm -hmm. yes you have lots of reasons to have chosen rice and I'm so happy that that was right for you okay awesome so now you've heard from Jadir I'm gonna hold on one second I'm gonna do a, a quick wrap up and then we'll just wave goodbye to everybody all right and so proud of you <laughs> oh so so proud I can't believe so we met when Jadir was uh, still a junior in, in high school. And so it's just great to see him. All right, everyone. Well, if this episode has in any way fueled your confidence or helped build your dreams, please share this episode with three people in the next 30 minutes. And you can see there, it's not, look at that little cute picture. I just love that photo. Um, if you do nothing else today, again, head over to bigfuture.org. You can create an account for free. And also, we'd love to have you join us on our Facebook group. Our parents, uh, uh, it's also Destination U University with a Y-O-U because the destination is not university. The destination is, in fact, you, Y-O-U. All right. And this summer, we are open. A registration for SA Camp opens April 11th. April 11th, you can head on over to drcynthiacolon.com forward slash SA camp to get more information. All right, that's all I have for you, my friends. Stay tuned the rest of April where you're here from more students. And in the meantime, let's wave goodbyes. Here. Ah, bye everyone. Good luck. Thank you so much for listening this week to Destination University. Be sure to join Dr. Cynthia Colon again and get one step closer to your success. 